여러분 안녕하세요. 국제교육과 이영경입니다. 오늘 학생들이 쭉 수업 때문에 늦게 도착을 해서 지금 이제 시작을 할게요. 어, 이두 학생들은 지난 시간에 발표해줬던 어, 데이나와 몰리입니다. 오늘은 모교인 어, 뉴욕 주립대학 오스웨고랑 캘리포니아 주립대학 롱비치에 대해서 소개를 해줄 거예요. 자, 그러면 제가 마이크를 넘기기 전에 아, 아까 댓글로 채팅으로 안내했듯이 글로벌 게이트웨이 참가하는 학생들은 댓글창에 학번과 이름 남겨주세요. 감사합니다. 여러분 지금 공유된 화면 보이세요? 보이면 채팅창에 보인다고 좀 남겨줄래요? 네, 그러면 시작하겠습니다. 어, uh, hi everyone. My name is Dana. Um, I am a fourth year student, and I go to California State University in Long Beach. And my major is international studies. Hi everyone, I go to Oswego um, State University of New York. I'm a third year student graduating this semester. I have two majors, linguistics and global international studies. Um, and today we're going to just introduce both of our universities. Okay, so to start out, I'm going to be talking about Oswego in um, New York. So first I want to talk about the location. So in, if you can see in this, um, in this map, the red arrow points to where my university is. It's across the water from Canada um, on Lake Ontario. And if you can see here, this is my entire campus um, across the whole lake. Um, it's quite spread out and it's a small campus, but it's really pretty. So the closest airports that we have are in Syracuse, um, which is just about here, um, probably middle of New York. Um, and then we have in Rochester, which is again by the lake a little bit further down. And then in New York City, we have John F. Kennedy. So these are the um, types of airports that are nearby in New York State. Um, and it's about 41 minutes for the closest airport. Um, so by car, so public transportation isn't used as much in the US. So just be aware of these types of things if you plan to travel within the US at Oswego or other universities. So um, the closest places to Oswego is like the closest cities are Syracuse, Rochester, Watertown, Buffalo. And um, when you're looking for a place to stay, you should also look up the type of weather that is used in these locations. So for my university, for the fall semester, usually we have um, The, the fall is around late September until mid-December, so you won't see snow until maybe late December or even until early April, it will stay. So um, you can see it in the spring semester more than the fall semester. And um, next I'd wanna talk about our student centers and amenities at my university. So um, Oswego mainly has the public library for the students, which has a 24 hour room, it's open 24 hours, seven days a week, and it's for students to go and study um, and print things that they need for classes and to meet with other students for presentations or um, activities. And then they also have in the top um, third level of this library, they have study carols, which are um, booths for students to study by themselves in an individual quiet space. Um, and these are reserved each semester. So if you are looking to um, study in one of these study carols at my school, then you need to contact ahead of time um, to get one of those reserved. And then we also have inside the library, a cafe for students to go and buy drinks so they can go and study inside the library with it. And also we have the tutoring and writing center for all students to use if they need help academically. Um, and There's also a few other programs that the school will provide for writing workshops or um, technology workshops for students. So 
you should always pay attention to what um, things your university provides when you're studying abroad. Also, we have um, two gyms which are in the residential areas of the school, so inside the dorms or near the dorm rooms. Um, and these two are Cooper Fitness Center and Glimmer Glass Fitness Center. And we also have inside the dorms and outside um, in academic buildings or near classrooms, study rooms or study lounges, just for students to sit at a table and study between their classes or while they're waiting for their friends or something like that. Um, so there's many opportunities in many places um, for students to be able to study. Um, and then we also have transportation system in on my campus. We have um, a bus that students can use for free if they get a tag on their a sticker on their ID when they arrive and they can use it to go outside to go shopping or to go to a mall or um, things like that. And I also suggest that if you're studying abroad, at least in the US, um, you should try to make American friends who have a car and most of your friends will have cars because everyone drives in the US. So that if you need to go somewhere or you can't find a bus system or taxi or Uber to bring you somewhere, you at least have a connection that somebody can bring you to like a doctor or hospital or something of that nature. All right. And the next I'm going to talk about is academics and student organizations at my university. So in my university for academics, we have five um, different sections and main, mainly you guys would be interested in the four of them for undergraduate programs, which are the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and then the School of Education, School of Business, School of Communication, Media, and the Arts. So each of these pretty much house each major um, that are offered in my university. And from each major, you are able to take courses related to that major. So most international students will focus on liberal arts and sciences, and they will take classes like creative writing, poetry, English, global studies, um, linguistics, philosophy, things of that nature, which um, can give you a little bit more of a perspective on the culture or the thinking process from another country in those aspects. So if you're interested in any of these classes, but you're not in that major, you can talk with your program or even your advisors at um, KNU or in your host university, and maybe you can work out a um, experience for you to experience some of these things. And then also we have student organizations, which are mainly like clubs. So at my university, at least, we have two main categories, which are academic and then hobbies. So academic would be more in line with your major. So for me, I'm a linguistics major, so I chose to be a part of a research type club for endangered languages in the US. So we focus on Native American languages and how they're dying out and how to research it. So it gives me an opportunity to connect with people in my field and also get con more connections with um, potential jobs that I could do or the interests that I have and learn more about my uh, major that I couldn't learn in my classes. And they also have different major clubs specifically for it. I know that um, there's a linguistics club, so it's different from the endangered language club because it's more just for the major and just for the types of things the major does, not just specifically to one area. Um, so that would also include like an HR or human resources club or a global studies club. So they have many types of academic um, opportunities for students. And then we also have the hobbies. So for um, hobbies, it would be like sports or arts or music or e-gaming. Um, so anything of that nature. When I went to my university before COVID, I did horseback riding in high school. So I decided to do it again in university and it got canceled because of COVID, but I was able to join horseback riding because of my school um, club that they had and have competitions. So look into some of these. And I'd like to mention that you can join, even if you're an international student, you can just go once or twice, or maybe you're interested and you want to interact with people who have share the same hobby with you, but from a different country. So a lot of people are really welcoming and really want more people to join their clubs. So don't worry about it and you can certainly join. Next, I want to talk about um, 
like the dorm and food options at my school. So in my school, there are mainly three types of um, dorm groups. One is called Lakeside. It's by the lake. Um, so these include like Johnson Hall, which is mostly for freshmen. And then the other three are just residential for any um, level of student. So Johnson Hall is mostly for first year students, not for international students. And then West Campus is um, more known for being on the west side and a little bit away from the academic building. So not many people um, stay there as much because it's kind of removed from the rest of the campus. And then we have Central Campus, which has Fennell and Hart Hall. And Hart Hall is mainly where the international students stay. Um, I was living there before, and this is my room. Um, so it, you have like a wardrobe and a mirror and then a desk and a bed. And underneath the bed is two dressers. Um, so this is like the type style room you would see in the US, I think. Um, and also in Hart Hall, because it's an international dorm, they have a kitchen on every single floor so that international students can cook their own food from home. Um, so at least in Hart Hall, when it's Friday night and you want to try some Indian food on Friday night, you would go to the, the seventh floor and there you would see some Indian cuisine being cooked or you can go to third floor and Korean students would be cooking food. So it's a good global experience that you can just try other people's food and um, you can share with others as well, which is really interesting. Um, all the other dorms at my school have a kitchen, but they only have one for the entire building to share in the basement, except Hart Hall because it's an international dorm. So if you're going to study abroad, I suggest you look into which universities have an international dorm. And if you're allowed to stay there, it might be a good option for you. It doesn't necessarily mean that your roommate will be a foreigner. It might just mean that um, you have more amenities or more things for you to use because you don't have um, a local home to go back to to use. So I'd also like to mention we have on-campus and off-campus housing. So these are like apartments that are provided by the school for on-campus. Um, most of the time you need to have a certain level of academics, like you need to be a senior or have a good grade standing. So just be aware that that's not usually as common for international students, but they also have off-campus housing. Um, but be aware that in the US, if you're living off campus, you're probably gonna need a car to get back like to and from campus. Um, so it might be a little bit more challenging if you don't live on campus. So you should take these things into consideration if you don't have a license or you don't have a car or you don't plan on getting either of those when you're studying abroad, at least in the US. And then next, I just want to highlight the food options. So at Oswego, we have about four main dining halls which are Lakeside, Cooper, Pathfinder, and Little Page. So most of the time people will eat in Lakeside, which is in this photo in the center of the slides. Um, and they, um, they mostly provide each dining hall with a salad bar, a sandwich bar, um, a cereal, a fruit, and um, you can have any type of carbonated or regular beverage. Uh, so, and they always provide at least two or three main meals and they will change it every single day. Um, so you just swipe your card or give your card to the worker to um, scan you into the room um, with your ID and then you can go to wherever you want and it's all you can eat. Um, you don't have to just choose one thing. You can go back many times as you want, get a new plate. So um, that's the type of dining experience in the US. So. Um, and then for restaurants and takeaway, at my school, we have a program with some of the local restaurants to use some um, ability, like a cash from your meal plan. So you pay for the meal plan and you pay for certain amount of meals a semester or a week. And then in addition, you can also buy what's called Laker dining dollars, which are um, money you pay the school already so that you can easily pay with your ID and you don't have to bring a credit card everywhere. Um, so for these types of restaurants like Wazones is like Calzone or pizza type place and Domino's also pizza. Um, Osigo Sub Shop is for um, subs or sandwiches and then Subway and fast food you can also use by um, using like Uber Eats or um, Grubhub. 
those types of things. Um, just be aware that Uber Eats and Grubhub usually have pretty extensive fees when you're trying to order. So it's better to buy on campus or um, if you're ordering from outside, you should have a car and go pick it up yourself um, so that you don't have to pay some of these fees. And then we also have on-campus shops like Lake Effect Cafe in the library, as I mentioned. We also have Fusion, which is a um, another type of cafe in another academic building. And then Crossroads and Wall Street Market are also type of cafes that also serve food. So when you're on campus and you're hungry, you can also find certain like pop-up shops, not really convenience stores. They're a little bit more pricey, I would say, than convenience stores, but they give an option for students to buy food on campus in between classes or when they're studying. All right, so next I want to just mention local attractions because when you're studying abroad, you also wanna experience what's happening around you in your state or even um, in your area where you can go. So as I had mentioned before, you really should find somebody who has a car or maybe look into getting an international license or um, renting a car for a little bit because sometimes you can't get to these places if you don't have a car. Um, or have someone to take you there. So in Oswego specifically, um, we have like three main attractions, which is Fort Ontario Historic Site, which is in the bottom here. Since New York is one of the most, um, like one of the states in the US that has the most longest history, um, there's a lot of historical places you can go in the US, especially on the East Coast um, for like early um, US involvement, like in the 19, or the 1700s or 1600s, somewhere around there. Um, so if you're interested in some of these historical places, then I would highly suggest that you go there because they can be really interesting and really insightful. So for the fort in Ontario, it's not used anymore, but it was really significant after World War II. It housed um, Jewish refugees in the US. So there's some significance there and it's on the water. So it's a really pretty location to go to. And then we have the um, Speedway, which is for race cars, and then the Oswego River, which you can see here. It's a little bit dark because it's cloudy, but it's a really pretty location too that people like to go and um, have snacks and drink there. So like coffee and have cafes. Um, and then also the other main ones, Syracuse and Watertown, they have like um, a, a fancy, a famous diner and also malls and a type of cheese store that's really famous. Um, so just like think about some of the places that you can go in these um, areas. And then Rochester, which is about an hour and a half away where I'm from, um, they have many um, historical places again and also fun places to visit. So for example, Highland Park around this time of year here has a lilac festival. It's a flower festival and they sell many foods or arts or um, types of local merchants go there and will um, be able to sell you something. So it's a really fun experience to see what an American festival is like at this time of year. So also you should research when you're going, if you're going in the fall or spring, what kind of holidays or festivals are usually occurring in your area and to plan to go to those because it's a better opportunity to see what local students or local communities are putting on in that area. So um, also we have Buffalo, which it's a little bit further away. So it might be a little bit out of reach, but it's also 30 minutes away from Niagara Falls that a lot of students um, go to see because it's one of the most well-known waterfalls in the world. So I highly suggest that you look into local attractions, look into getting a car, um, make a lot of friends and see what their interests are and see where they they would suggest to you to go. So, and with that, I'm going to pass it on to Dana. Uh, so I'm just going to talk a, a little bit about my school, California State University, Long Beach. And I'll start with um, the location. Um, so it might be a little bit hard to see uh, on the map, but it's in between Los Angeles and the city here called uh, Santa Ana. And like the name implies, it is by the beach. Um, so there are three airports that you that are surrounding um, 
the city and the school. There's the Long Beach Regional Airport, which um, we call LGB. And there's also the John Wayne Airport, which we call SNA. And there's also the Los Angeles International Airport, or we just call it LAX in, in California. And you'll most likely probably arrive in LAX just because it's one of the bigger airports in California and a lot of international flights go through there. Long Beach Regional Airport and John Wayne Airport are more, more so for domestic flights. So if you're, um, if you're coming from another state, but um, even though it's a little bit farther from the school, I recommend that you just fly in through LAX anyways, because um, it'll probably be cheaper than trying to fly in through Long Beach Regional, just because they don't process as many international flights. And as I mentioned um, a little bit ago, it's about a 20 minute drive away from the downtown area, which has the beach and for, um, the location in particular, it's in between lo what we call Los Angeles County and Orange County. And um, counties in the United States are similar to, I believe, districts here in Korea. So it's in between those two counties, but still considered part of um, Los Angeles County. As for the weather, um, much like the rest of California, it never snows, like ever. <laughs> and it rarely rains. Because um, California is just a really hot state, the temperatures rise really fast. Um, and for Long Beach in particular, like I said, because it is by the beach, it does tend to get very windy. But um, just at, especially for um, California in general, we don't really have like an autumn season, um, just because, like I mentioned, it's really hot. So the temperature doesn't start dropping until like maybe mid-November. And the coldest month is um, around December and the hottest month is August, but the summer, like I mentioned, the summer temperatures do go into, uh, do go up until around mid-November. So um, I just wanna to touch a little bit on the student facilities. These were, there's more than what I listed here, but these were the ones that I personally think are the most important or the most interesting. And so first we have the university library, which is just called the university library. There's five floors and also a basement floor. And what I do want to mention in particular is that you don't need to make a reservation to go into the library. I know here at KMU you need to make like some kind of reservation or something like that to use the library, but um, at my school and a lot of other universities in America in general, you just walk right in. And um, for my school's or for my school's library in particular, there are designated like quiet floors. So if you just want to work in silence, there's floors for that. And then there's also floors for like if you need to have like a meeting for like a group project and you need to talk and be a little bit loud, there's floors for that as well. And we also have late night study rooms. They're not part of the library or they're not attached to the library, but they are nearby the library. And I didn't note it down here, but they are available for use, I believe from like 11 or 10 p.m. up until 8 a.m. And you don't need to make a reservation for those either, but you do need your student ID card to swipe, the, um, to swipe it on the lock on the door to get access to the study room. And we also have the Earl Burns Miller Japanese Garden, which is this middle picture right here. And um, it's a Japanese style garden that's in the Southern part of campus. If you have your student ID, it's free admission. They, I believe they're just only closed on Mondays and Saturdays, but if you just want a little piece of nature, you can just go in, oh, excuse me. <laughs> you can just uh, go in, take a walk. There's also a koi pond in there as well. And prior to COVID, they did let you feed the koi for I believe like a dollar, but I'm not sure if that's changed because of COVID. And so we also have the University Student Union or it's just called the USU uh, among the students. 
and it's just a really big um it's in the center of campus or it's considered the center of campus and it just has things like a game center in there and then also a food court which i'll touch more on later but it's mostly known for its game center where you can go bowling or you can play billiards or i believe it's called pool right yeah um you can also play pool and then there's also arcade games too and for bowling in particular it's uh renting shoes and and uh playing a few games is pretty cheap it's uh, renting shoes is around i believe five thousand one and playing like one game is around three or four thousand one so um, in addition to that, we also have the Student Recreation and Wellness Center, which is um, our gym. And um, it's we only have one gym on campus, unfortunately. But um, if you have your student ID, it is uh, free because it's included in the tuition. You just need to bring your ID so that they can swipe you in and you can use the facilities. And we also have uh, swimming pools on campus. There's three swimming pools, but I believe only two are open for uh, student use. So if you want to go swimming, but you don't necessarily you don't feel like going to the beach, there's that option as well. And we also have multiple convenience stores uh, on campus, and they're not attached to um, the dorms, so you don't um, you don't need like an ID or anything. You can just walk in. And uh, I know in particular, there's one convenience store that's right next to the library. And as for transportation, we have an on-campus shuttle that um, it'll pick you up from, um, from the off-campus apartments. And I believe it'll drop you off at certain parking lots on campus. And there's also you, public transportation. We have what's called the Long Beach Transit, which is the bus system. And you can use that to get around the city, but like um, like the rest of America, it's just easier if you drive around. So I think it's better if you just make friends with someone who has a car and ask them if they're willing to drive you to certain places just so that you can save time. And I'd like to talk just a little bit about the academic programs and the student organizations. Um, my school is actually really big. So we have, I believe, over 300 or over 200 um, departments. Uh, what's listed in the picture right here is the main um, colleges, but we have like an extensive number of departments within those colleges. So if you want to see the full list of majors and departments, I have a link down here so you can um, check it out. And if, uh, if you decide to study abroad at Long Beach, you don't only have to take classes in your major, you can take whichever um, classes that interest you. You just have to make sure that you meet like the requirements for it. So for example, if you are taking like an English three class, then you need to make, if you want to take like an English level three class, then you need to make sure that you um, have the qualifications or that you already are, sorry, um, that you are already like pre-approved for that. So like having the equivalent of already taking like English one and two. And so that is something that you would need to work out with uh, KNU and also like the study abroad office um, at Long Beach. And for student organizations, uh, I included a link down here below because there's so, so many um, organizations on campus. There's over 300 and there's many different types. For example, for example, if you just want to join like a recreational club and you wanna play sports, there's a club for that. But if you also want to do more networking uh, for career options, or you just want to, um, meet other people that are within like your major there's organizations for that too um two organizations that i do want to talk about in particular though are the international student association and the korean american student association so the international student association is like like the name says it's a club where you can meet not only um 
other international students, but also domestic students as well. So if you don't get placed into the international house, which I will talk more about later, but if you don't get into that housing and you still want to meet domestic students and other international students, joining the International Student Association is just a really good way to meet people of all kinds of backgrounds. And the second uh, organization that I mentioned, the Korean American Student Association, uh, I want to mention it in particular because um, during International Day, a student had actually asked me if there was a way to meet like other Korean students at Long Beach. And so the closest thing we have to that other than the International Student Association is the Korean American Student Association, which it's, um, it's a club mainly made uh, mainly with uh, Korean students who were born in America or just immigrated to America and lived most of their life in America. But the members of those clubs aren't limited to just those of Korean descent. Anyone can join. So you don't only have to fit in one of those categories, but it's a good way to meet someone who's similar to you. And next, uh, I just would like to talk about housing and food. So we have three dorms on campus and they're called residential, residential villages. They're called Beachside, Parkside, and Hillside. Beachside is the farthest from campus whereas Hillside is considered closest to the campus center. And on top of that, there's also certain like theme housing available. And so most international students choose um, international house or other students call it I house. And so if you wanna stay on the dorms, I highly recommend that you apply for I house because like I mentioned earlier, it's just a really easy way to meet other, um, other students other international students. And one thing that I want to point out in particular that is different from the KNU dorms is that other than being furnished with a bed uh, and a desk and a mirror, uh, the dorm rooms also come with a microwave, a mini fridge and a waste basket. And so um, if, you want to, if you want to eat ramen at like midnight, you don't really have to worry about, you know, going, like leaving your, um, leaving your dorm room to find a microwave and uh, so on. And then also if you apply for, or if you apply for the dorms, campus housing services will pair you with your roommate before the start of the semester. So for example, if there's something you think you might need for your room, like a fan or something, um, you can contact your roommate before you move in to see if they're going to bring it. And I personally really like this because that, like, that way when you move in, your roommate isn't just a surprise. And also um, it's a lot easier, for example, if your roommate is a domestic student and you need to go to the market or something, you need to get something, you can just ask uh, your, your roommate if they're a domestic student. And also, so that way you don't end up bringing duplicates of an item. Okay. And other than the dorms, there's also the off-campus apartments. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know too much about them, but you, I do know that they aren't affiliated with the school. Um, so that would require like a lot more extra research on your own part because um, they abide by different rules than the campus dorms. And so, um, <clears throat> And so there's different, uh, there's different like factors to keep in mind, like the length of your lease and how much it's going to cost to live there. And also some of the off-campus apartments might not be like fully furnished at all. So then you'd have to worry about like buying, uh, buying furniture and appliances and all that. And also if you are on like any kind of scholarship program, you might not even be able to stay on off-campus apartments. I know that's a thing for some universities um, in California and then also at Molly's University as well. Um, so you just need to double check everything and do a little bit more research on that. And so, but if you're staying in the dorms, you do get access to the dormitory cafeteria. And there's three of them, they're named 
Um, they're named just after the dorms. So beachside dining, parkside dining, and hillside dining. Um, this picture right here is a picture of uh, the hillside dining hall. And so uh, like Molly mentioned earlier, uh, it's like a buffet style where you have like three main meals and like a fountain for like if you want like a certain drink and so on and so forth. It's not it's not like at KNU where you only have like one main dish. You have a little bit more option and the options rotate out every day and for every meal as well. And but if you don't want to eat at the dining hall all the time, there's also what the students call. Oh, and also if you have dietary restrictions as well, um, that's why it uh, that's why at a lot of American universities, the dining hall has more than one option. And so, um, but if you don't want to eat at the cafeteria all the time, we have what's called the University Dining Plaza, which is in the University Student un Union. Um, but the students just call it like the food court. <laughs> um, and that area just has like, um, takeaway and um, fast food. I know in particular, there is a Subway and a Starbucks and a Pandas Express, if you know what that is. Um, um, as far as I know, though, because of COVID, they did shut it down. But because classes started being on campus again, I'm not sure if they brought it back. But if you're planning, I think if you're planning to go sometime next year, it might be back by then. And so uh, other than the, the dining plaza, we also have a few on-campus restaurants. Um, the most popular ones among the students are the Nugget, which is like a bar type of um, restaurant. They serve, like, they serve food as well, but um, if you want alcohol, you can buy it here too. You just can't bring it outside of the restaurant. You have to order it and drink it in the restaurant. And then there's also uh, the Outpost Grill, which as the, name as the name implies, it's a grill type restaurant. And there's also the Chart Room, which is um, buffet style, but not many students go there. The most popular ones are, like I said, the Nugget and the Outpost. And if you don't want to eat on campus at all, there's plenty of off-campus restaurants. Um, usually for universities in America, um, it's it's called what we have like a university town where all the other like dining areas and shopping areas aren't too far away from campus and so if you don't want to eat on campus at all there is a lot more food options that are just like a short drive away so lastly I just want to talk about like sightseeing because I mean if you're studying abroad you you want to go sightseeing right um, so like I mentioned earlier um, the school is just a really short drive away from down the downtown area, which um, we just call downtown Long Beach. And there's a bunch of restaurants and a bunch of shopping areas around. But in particular, there's also um, the aquarium, which is called the Aquarium of the Pacific. And this is a picture of it in the middle. It's a very nice aquarium. And at least prior to COVID, there was a lot of like inter interactional um, exhibits. I'm not sure if they have changed it because of COVID, because I haven't gone like since COVID, but if by the time you decide to go and um, they, might, they might have brought back like the interactional um, activities, like touching starfish and, and such. And so, there's also the Queen Mary, which is right next to the aquarium. I believe it's only like a 10 minute walk, but it's not that far. Um, and the Queen Mary used to be a cruise ship, but it's now retired. And so they turned it into a like a resort and like a tourist attraction. And so you can buy tickets to see the inside of the ship and then also for like seasonal events they have special exhibits in the ship like I know one year that I went um, for Christmas with my family they had an ice sculpture exhibit so if you paid to get on the ship you could go into this room that had like a bunch of ice sculptures and they, they let you borrow like a jacket because it, it's really cold in there 
So um, they do have different events depending on the season. You just need to um, you just need to look it up and find out um, what it is. And also, I didn't include a picture of it, but since Long Beach is a port city, you can take a ferry to this island that's just off the coast, um, and it's called Catalina Island. And if I were to describe it, it's kind of like Hawaii, but just really condensed into one um, island. And the taking the ferry is really, really cheap. I believe it's like less than a hundred dollars for one person. And um, yeah, oh, sorry, uh, less than a hundred dollars one way uh, for one person. But I mean, if you want to stay there for a week, there's like round round trip tickets available. And the ferry ride from Long Beach to the uh, to Catalina Island is only about like an hour and a half. And it's a small island that's considered part of like LA County, but the biggest city that most people stay in because that's where there's the most like tourist attractions is called Avalon, which is where the ferry will drop you off. And in addition to that, there's also the Museum of Latin American Art and the Long Beach Museum of Art. Okay, and um, with that, I'd just like to end our presentation. Um, if you guys have any questions, don't feel shy to like let us know in the chat. Um, I do want to mention one last time that like study abroad is a really good experience and don't just pigeon your whole hole yourself to like students that you came um, to the US with or to other countries with. So just it's an international experience and you want to be as international as possible and try American cultures. And um, like we said, if you have a friend that has a car for holidays and things like that too, sometimes they um, the friends will often invite you back home so you can experience like American Thanksgiving or American Easter, sometimes even Christmas for the winter holidays if you're staying a year. So just branch out and be willing to try new things, I think. So if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself. There's a, we also left our contact information just like last time in case you are too shy to ask a question now or you don't have a question now but you think of one later uh, 질문 있는 학생들은 지금 채팅이나 마이크 켜고 말씀을 해 주세요. Stop here. 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 그리고 아직까지 채팅창에 학번 이름 안 남긴 글로벌 게이트웨이 참가생들 있으면 지금 남겨주세요. 자, 그럼 오늘 발표에 대해서 질문은 없나요? 네. <웃음> 아, 너무 발표를 잘해 주셨나 봐요. 네, 그러면 오늘 어, 참가해 주신 학생들 감사드리고요. 오늘 발표해 준 몰리와랑 데이나에게도 감사합니다. Thank you. Bye. 자, 그러면 오늘 수고하셨고요. 나중에 또 뵐게요. 감사합니다.